A new organization seeking to promote open government has its sights set on the Maryland legislature. Joining us now are Seamus Kraft and Chris Burke of the Open Gov Foundation. Thanks to both of you for being with us. Thanks for having Thanks us. For having us. Seamus, one of the things you're focused on is the Maryland legislature's website, which recently got an overhaul. How, how would you rate uh, the, that overhaul? It was an excellent step. Um, we've been working in Maryland for the last few months, so all we're very familiar with is the new one. Uh, but last week we held a uh, focus group with a number of staffers and reporters who use this website on a daily basis. Uh, they said it's been a vast improvement, uh, but there's still a lot of work to do, and we were trying to get uh, some of the things that need to be built, things that need to be fixed, so that we can help fill that gap and build off of the great work that the legislature's done already. The, the focus group uh, was with MarylandReporter.com, and, and what I read about it was, yeah, it was mostly positive, but where, where is there room for improvement? I think just some of the basic search function functionalities. Um, you know, there are some things that they want to look for, and they have to go to, you know, five or six different places to kind of um, get all the information in one spot. And if you could do a search and get all the information right there in front of you, um, that would be a big improvement for them. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Uh, citizens today, including public servants and officials, uh, they access information online, and they access it in a way sort of like Google, where you have a simple box, you put in what you want, and you always get the information you're looking for. Uh, that's powered by a lot of very smart geekery done on the back end. Uh, that's what we're looking to help uh, so that folks who are on the Maryland Legislature website get exactly what they're looking for as quickly as possible and then get back to work. So on the Legislature website, if you want to learn about a bill and you know the bill number, it's a Senate bill, it's a House bill, you type that in, you're in business. I mean, you can read the bill, you can read the changes to it, uh, usually see how people voted. Uh, but if you don't know the bill number, it's a little bit tougher. Is that, is that one of the issues? Correct. Uh, it comes down to the fact that you need to know the inside game and how the information is sorted and put into the website to get out of it what you want. Uh, that number of people are very limited. Most Maryland citizens don't have time to have a law degree or to come down to Annapolis and know the bill number or know the specific term that they use to categorize that bill in the search. What we're trying to do is make it more human and accessible to folks who aren't there every day. And how can you do that? It's their website, but what can you do about it? Well, we have a talented guy like Chris, who's very, very good with software and computer code. Do you want to talk a little bit about scraping? Yeah, um, you know, a, a term in, in software development is scraping, where you can actually write software to go out and take information um, from sites that are already out there and kind of um, put that, that information together and then write searches of your own that maybe are a little bit more inclusive or um, you know can get to the point a little bit quicker than, than what's out there right now. So their data is all public record stuff to begin with. You're just gonna take that and make it more easily accessible. Correct. That's a, that's a very succinct way of putting it. The Maryland Legislature and the Department of Legislative Services have done an excellent job of getting information up and out online. Uh, what we're here to do is to take that information without having to bother them, uh, make them do more work or an extra time, uh, and build more tools and search functions that are more like the web that you and I are familiar with when you go to a website like Google or, a, or a more like an ESPN, something like that. So no matter how good at this stuff and how fast Chris is at it, uh, you need some resources. Tell me about the foundation, uh, your funding and all of that. Sure, uh, we grew out of the US Congress uh, where we encountered a lot of these technical obstacles to the jobs that public, service, uh, public servants and citizens have to do. Uh, instead of throwing up our hands, we said, let's get a smart guy like Chris and build something better. Uh, that's where it started. Uh, so we built tools within the U.S. Congress that grew out into uh, how can we take this and what we learned there, what works and what doesn't, and go to a state, um, and how do we do that in a way that allows us to be uh, helpful to everybody. That's why we're a 501c3 uh, nonprofit, nonpartisan foundation, um, and we're funded by uh, our co-founder, Congressman Darrell Issa, partly, uh, but then matched by the Knight Foundation, which is a, a great Miami-based uh, open government and journalism organization. Talk big picture for a second. What, what, what does it mean for, for citizens out there that, that they have the good access that they have and they might have better access? Well, 
In America, what separates us from the rest of the world is citizens have a right to public information. They have a right to know what they get from their government, but they also have a right to raise their hand, speak up, and contribute. Back from the Revolutionary War days, where people gathered in a town square to debate policies going on in Congress, uh, through today, that debate is happening online. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking the, the tools and the, the glorious innovations available to people today with software, with design, with mobile devices, uh, and bring that to the government information to take the world of James Madison into the 21st century. Chris, you have a, a codathon, is that what it's called, coming up? A hackathon. Hackathon. A hackathon this weekend. Um, that, that sounded more, um, I don't know, dastardly than a codathon. This, yeah. this is a benign thing. We're not hacking Absolutely. into Absolutely. City bank or only, something. Only yeah. for good. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we have it going on all weekend up in Baltimore. Um, it's going to get um, everyone who, who is interested in making Maryland better, the city of Baltimore better, um, everyone from tech, techie developers like myself to designers to civically enthused citizens. To the um, mayor. The mayor's coming yeah. on Sunday. Um, anyone who wants to come and help out, um, it's going to be what we do on a day-to-day -day basis in real time. So open government in action. What we did with the Maryland Code, for example, one of the projects we're working on there is taking the Baltimore City Code, which the mayor just published in a, in a restriction-free uh, open format, uh, and make it uh, accessible and user-friendly like we do with the state. So if you want to see what that looks like, uh, come on down. So all that information was there, all the city laws, ordinances, and you just made it more accessible. Exactly. It's it's. I have right here my, my handy constitution. Uh, the way that the law is on uh, online right now is paper-based. It hasn't advanced much from, from the time that people only had books to turn to for information. So what we're trying to do is give citizens more choices to access that information and tools to put it to work for them, whether you're someone inside government or outside. In a second, give me your website. People want to get in touch. Sure. Um, I'll give you my email address. Do you one better? It's Seamus at OpenGovFoundation.org, and our website is OpenGovFoundation.org. Thanks very much, Seamus and Chris. Appreciate the time. <laughs> Open guys.